behind the voices of Sing. My next show is gonna be, drum roll please, a singing competition. Ah, Sing. One of the most popular movies that Illumination Animation has ever released. If you're watching this video, then I'll guess you're a big fan of the movie. I mean, how could you not be? Good story, interesting characters, funny plot, and a powerful ending. I think it's it's so beautiful to see um, not only the fact that he gets up and, and tries again, and all these characters, you know, it's like, okay, let's try again, but it's they're not alone in it. It's like they have each other, and they have um, this support group sort of thing to kind of uh, encourage and, and lift up. I think that in itself is such a great message as well for people to know um, that you don't have to do that alone. You know, when you do hit a rock bottom and, um, you know, just to have people around you, your family, people that love you, um, it's really a really beautiful thing and a really powerful thing. Not only that, but Sing also released an original song that was created by Ariana Grande and Stevie Wonder. And yes, I do mean that Stevie Wonder. They both created one of the most memorable songs out there titled Sing, which, fun fact, got nominated for a Golden Globe. How cool is that? Not only the song that featured two of the most legendary singers, it also has a very talented and diverse line of voice actors, from Matthew McConaughey to Seth MacFarlane. In today's video, we're counting down behind the voices of Sing. <laughs> Before the video starts, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below, like the video, and we will randomly give a shout out to one of you at the end of the video. And with that, let's continue on to Behind the Voices of Sing. Number 6, Matthew McConaughey. Real talent from real life. That's what audiences want, and I'm gonna give it to them. Let's first talk about the main lead of the movie, Matthew McConaughey. Like, honestly, how could you imagine Matthew McConaughey, star of many, many classic movies such as Dallas Buyers Club, Interstellar, and The Wolf of Wall Street? would be in such a cute and adorable movie. Playing as Buster Moon, an optimistic koala who plans to have his theater from closure by holding a singing competition. He thinks that his character is cute and easy. Being a koala bear hustler dreamer salesman who pushes his way into things. He's a uh, hustling, conning, lovable, optimistic salesman trying to keep the theater open. The last theater is going down and his love of the theater and I grew up with it. His romantic involvement with the, what the theater is to him. Um, he comes up with an idea to have a singing competition, keep this theater alive, and uh, by any means necessary, he's gonna get it done. He loves that he can do attitude that his character shows throughout the movie. Like Moon over leveraged himself so people could say yes to doing his show. He is trying to keep his rent raised from the circus he is making, McConney said. Everyone in the city gets a shot at being a star in our singing competition. Number 5. Seth MacFarlane. That prize? It's mine. Okay, if you think Matthew McConaughey's role in the movie is so unbelievable, you wouldn't believe that Seth MacFarlane, yes, that Seth MacFarlane, who is the creator of Family Guy, is also playing as a character in this movie. MacFarlane is playing as Mike, a white mouse and street singer with a big fat Signatra-esque voice and an arrogant attitude. As many of you know, Seth is a big fan of jazz music. It's not only a wonder that Seth would be a cast for this voice, of course. With this movie being focused on singing in the movie, Seth also covers Sinatra's classic song, My Way, with some help from Sinatra's voice coach. I did it my way. I can bet Seth is just in this movie to show off his vocal powers. Number four, Scarlett Johansson. Okay, if you think there is no way that Illumination could get themselves an even more wide range of voice talent, you would be wrong, as they have gotten themselves Scarlett Johansson. Yes, uh, that Scarlett Johansson, who plays as Black Widow in the Avengers franchise, to play in this movie. Johansson plays as Ash, a teenage crested porcupine punk rocker who takes part in an alternative rock music duo with her boyfriend Lance. Johansson is very interested in the movie because she has never gotten to voice a role to this extent, seeing the source material of such an interesting and heartwarming movie. She just felt that this is the right movie for her to star in. She just felt that it is so fun for movies to feature animals relating to one another in a very human way. When you set it all free, all free, all free. When you set it all free, all free, all free. You set it all free. 
when she was asked about her role as a porcupine, she just said that, being honest, she wouldn't choose being a porcupine, but the role was already given to her when she started. If she could choose an animal that would fit her better in the movie, she would choose to be a house cat. But in the end, she agrees that porcupines are also a cute animal, as they can protect the people around them. We just witnessed the birth of a genuine rock star! Moon, you, you've got some stuck here. Number 3, Nick Kroll. This stage is about to explode with major power. Nick Kroll, best known for creating and starring in the Comedy Central series Kroll Show, is also starring in the movie as Gunter, a passionate dancing domestic pig who is partnered with Rosita, played by Reese Witherspoon for the show. For Kroll, he sees Gunter, the character he is playing, as the most positive character he has ever played as. When the other characters seem to have an emotional journey of their own, Gunter does not. It doesn't seem like Gunter is affected by any personal issues as he just enjoys being there and staying positive. He is filled with piggy power, to quote him directly. This stage is about to explode with major piggy power! So sorry, I have no control. He just sees Gunter as a fun, lively character who just wants to dance and help Witherspoon's character, Rosita, to open up a bit. He just felt lucky to be casted in the movie as he is playing a character that he strives to become, a performer, to just let go. It's like what all of us, I think, would hope to be as performers, which is what, when you're performing, it, you know, just like, let go. Number two, Tori Kelly. Uh, yeah, I mean, no. I mean, uh, yes, yeah, I, I can sing, uh, but no, I get, I get so nervous and I, I, I can do it. No, I mean, I would do it, but I, no, I just, no. Okay, Tori Kelly, best known for her many, many pieces of music and was even nominated for a Grammy, is also playing in this movie. Kelly is playing as Mina, a teenage Indian elephant with an exquisite voice and severe stage fright. For Tori, what struck her to star in the movie in the first place was how the movie made her so giddy with the music that is in it. Added that she truly enjoys singing, it seems that it is just a perfect fit to be a part of it. The reason why I connect to Mina so much is I, I saw myself in her and how she tries to sort of figure out what that fear is, why am I so afraid of being on stage, and, and you know, once she is on stage and finally just lets herself go, um, you know, she's able to realize that the music is a lot bigger than her fear, so um, I think that's why I was able to connect with her so much, because I still feel that all the time. Not only that, but she also felt a connection with her character, Mina, with how she overcame having stage fright, fighting her fears, and pushing through when she finally learned to let go. She realized that her music is much bigger than her fear. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of Song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. And finally, number one, Taron Egerton. If I feel that I could be certain then I would say the things I want to say. Taron Egerton, best known for his role as Gary Eggsy Unwin in the action comedy film Kingsman The Secret Service, and its sequel Kingsman The Golden Circle, is playing a role as Johnny, a teenage gorilla who wants to sing, though his father would rather have him follow his criminal footsteps. Where were you? Um, well... Thing is, I went to get gas and uh, Don't lie to me! Um, I was at a rehearsal. You're nothing like me. You never were and you never will be. I'll get you out! Dad, wait! I'll get the money! I promise! For Egerton, this movie is so compelling to him because it was such a simple idea while still appealing for him. It is basically a movie about animals in a singing competition. It also interests him that the first animated movie he was ever a cast on was going to be singing focused as well. Being that it is his first voice only role, it helps to be focused alone in the recording booth, delivering his lines. For him, Johnny, the character that he plays, is such a good character to play as. He felt that Johnny describes the people who are on a predominant path while not able to pursue a path that gave the person happiness. Not only that, in his eyes, he also felt that there is a character for each of the viewers that they can relate to. And that's all for the video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Subscribe to this channel and leave a comment down below, like the video, and we will randomly shout out to one of you at the end of the video. For today's shout out, we are going to shout out this comment. Thank you so much for supporting us. So with that, we'll see you all in the next video.